Welcome to Planet's Cabinet Vision tutorial, Bid Center Rate Tables. I will be using Cabinet Vision Solid Ultimate version 9. Rate tables are where you store your groups of bid methods. When setting up rate tables, it is important to give them a name that is indicative of the bid methods selected within it, as you will be required to choose the name from a list. Rate tables sort themselves into alphabetical order and are applied to your report in this order. So if you intend for a percentage to be applied as a bid method at the end of a running total, you will need to ensure it falls at the end of the rate table list. Here you can see that all of the markup rate tables have the letter Z in front of the title to force them to the bottom of the list. Using this technique can also help you group rate tables to keep the list organised, which can assist you in making selections when you have a large list of rate tables to choose from. To create a new rate table or edit an existing, when you have the rate tables list open, select Setup. You can then select the rate table you wish to view or edit from the drop down list, or you can select Create New from the toolbar. Each rate table will need to contain at least one, if not a combination, of bid methods in order to return the calculation of costs required. All potential bid methods should be included here to cover the variety of areas in the setup where pricing has been entered, even if not all jobs will include that method. For example, occasionally you may like to include objects in your plans or objects list that have a labour in minutes value applied in their properties. Even though these objects may not be added to every single job you do, you should always have a bid method in use for per hour of accessory labour, so that on the occasions when these objects are drawn in the plan, any labour times applied to them will be converted to a cost and come through automatically. If you have a job with no such objects in it, then the line will simply not calculate anything, or it may show a price of $0 if your options have been set up to display this. To activate rate tables to calculate costing for a job, simply select them in the list of rate tables and select OK. Each rate table will then be displayed in the bid breakdown list. Remember, if you are viewing your bid breakdown in internal mode, you will be able to expand each rate table to view the bid methods and components that are returning the calculated price. Bid methods are the various ways in which you decide to price particular items within your rate tables and they are selected from a drop down menu when you are in the setup of a rate table. The value that each bid method returns is usually multiplied by a value you have entered during setup such as in your material catalogue or on your object properties. New bid methods cannot be created by a user nor can the existing ones be changed. There are over 100 bid methods plus any custom labour schemes you have created that you can select from. For a full list of these available bid methods, search the Cabinet Vision help file. Labour schemes or labour tables are designed to assist you in developing your labour times and costs. They can be accessed when you are in the bid centre from your view mode. To edit your labour scheme, select the appropriate one from the drop down list on the sidebar and click on the Edit Labour Schemes tool. To create a new labour scheme, once any labour scheme has been opened for viewing or editing, you have the ability to select Create New from the toolbar. Labour schemes are created utilising the same bid method line items as your rate tables. The labour scheme editor is basically the same as the rate table setup, with the exception that instead of entering currency or percentage values, you are entering minutes for the selected bid method and a dollar value per hour. Once you have saved your labour scheme, you can view your labour times here for your job or you can recall it as a bid method in any of your rate tables to convert those times into costings. Let's work through an example to demonstrate some ideas of how you can use rate tables to calculate a cost for your jobs. We'll use this simple cabinet with a bench top as our example, but remember, the methods shown here are examples only. There will be other ways of generating your costs that you may find more suitable. The first step is ensuring you understand what material schedules you have selected in the job, so that you know exactly what materials are being used to make your cabinet. For this cabinet I am using 16mm HMR whiteboard and 16mm CP1 board together with matching edge banding material, 96mm handles and bloom hinges. In the material manager I have ensured there are values added against each of the materials just mentioned. 
Now that I know what materials are being used and that they have costs applied to them, I need to set up the rate tables in the bid centre to calculate that costing. Typically, if you are using a new system, when you go into the bid centre, no value will be showing up yet. To retrieve the material cost just mentioned, I need to set up a rate table that is using the right bid method. Open the rate tables and go to setup. Select to create a new rate table. This rate table is going to be used when I want to cost a job that is being built with standard square edge doors and panels, so I need to name the rate table accordingly. The first line item I need to enter into this new rate table will be using a bid method to retrieve the material costs. Firstly, I give the line a name such as material cost. Then I select the bid method percentage of material cost which will retrieve all of the values entered in the material manager for all of the materials used in the job. I want to retrieve the full value of material cost so I will enter a value of 100%. Now to test the new rate table. Close the setup mode, put a tick next to the rate table in the list and select OK. A cost should now be seen in the bid breakdown. I'll select to view internal mode so I can expand the rate table in the bid breakdown to view it in more detail. I can now confirm that all materials being used in the cabinet drawing are showing up here in the bid report so I can move on and consider what else needs to be priced such as the benchtop and labour. To generate a price for the bench top, I will create a separate rate table. By having a separate rate table, it will allow me to price the job easily with or without the bench tops. Back to rate tables, select setup and new. Enter a name for this rate table. The name for this rate table will be bench tops 20mm stone. I will give the first line item a name and select the per square metre of countertop bid method to use. I must remember to enter the square metre rate here for 20mm stone. Even though this example is a single piece of rectangular bench top, I need to consider all other costs that may be applicable when using stone bench tops and add them into the same rate table as new line items. Now to close and select the rate table from the list to test it. I can now see both rate tables being applied in the bid breakdown. When expanded, the bench tops rate table only shows two costs being calculated from the four line items that were entered in the rate table setup. This is because no cutouts or joins have been drawn in the bench top and therefore the bid methods per top cutout and per top mitre will not be activated for this particular job. I have however drawn the bench top with a profile edge applied on all seen edges called polished edge. This is a profile I have set up purely to apply to my drawings for costing purposes only, not graphics, when I know I am using stone bench tops and will need to account for pricing the polished edges. If I wanted to add an object to this cabinet such as a bin, I can go back to my plan and drop the object in from the catalogue. The object already has a fixed price applied to it and a minute value for additional labour to fit the object. Back to the bid centre, I can see the object comes through automatically under the room furnishings. No bid method is required for this. I do however need to allow for the extra time it will take to fit the bin into the cabinet, so I need to use a bid method in my rate tables to retrieve the labour in minutes value from the object's properties. I will open the setup of my existing rate table and add a new line item below my material costs. I will call it labour for special fittings and select the per hour of accessory labour bid method to retrieve that value from the object's properties and then enter a value per hour so it can be converted to a cost. Now to close the rate table to test it. You can see the object itself, the bin, here and the labour for fitting the bin into the cabinet is here. Now that all materials and objects have been allowed for in this example, I'll set up a labour scheme for my general cabinet construction. In labour view, I'll select the setup labour icon from the sidebar. The setup of the sample labour scheme will open. You can select to create a new labour scheme, but in this example I will copy the sample and make the changes I require. I'll select a copy labour scheme and give it a new name. I will change the first two line items to be cutting and edging and I will assign a minute value using the per part bid method based on average times that have been calculated from the factory. I also need to ensure there is a dollar value entered in the dollar per hour field to the far right if I want a costing to generate as well as the times. 
I have worked my way through the list and made adjustments. I have used the tools at the top to add new group headings and to move line items into the correct groups or delete lines that I no longer wanted. Now that I am happy I have accounted for all steps in the labour process, I will need to add this labour scheme to my rate tables. When I close the labour setup and select the new labour scheme from the sidebar, I can see the labour breakdown here. Returning to the bid breakdown view, I'll select the rate tables and go to the setup of the standard doors rate table. I will enter another new line item called labour and select the bid method to read to the new labour scheme I've just created. After closing the rate table setup and ensuring the rate table is still selected in the list, when I expand the bid breakdown for the standard doors rate table, I can see the newly added labour values coming through. So basically what I have now is a net cost for my job. You may have noticed that in my rate tables I didn't add any markup values. That's because I intend on using another rate table to assign my markups. Back to rate tables, set up, create new. I will want this rate table to add about 45% to our net cost to allow for overheads and profit, so I will call it markup 45. I will add in a line item called markup and select the bid method percentage of running total and add a value of 45%. When I close out of the setup, I can see the new rate table in the list. It is very important that this rate table falls at the end of the list because it is using the percentage of running total bid method and the order in the list in which the rate table is applied is very important to ensure it calculates the right value based on the actual running total or in other words the items priced above it in the list. So I will go back into the setup of the rate tables and rename it to have a Z in front of the name. This will ensure it always falls at the end of the list regardless of how many other rate tables are added and what their names will be because the list will always be sorted in alphabetical order. Now when I tick it and select OK, you can see all costing details and the values being calculated in the entire bid breakdown. I hope you have found this example and our entire Bid Centre Rate Tables tutorial informative. Thank you for watching.